Okay, this is an OR microscope. It's a polarizing microscope as well. We call it an OR microscope because it has both an upper and a transmitted polarizing light. The upper light is considered a reflecting polarizing light. This is the light housing for the upper illumination, also known as EPI, EPI, EPI illumination. The bulb is inside this housing. The light travels this direction and down into the objective and reflects off of the specimen, then back up into the objective. The bottom light is different. It's a transmitted light. It, it shines the light directly up and through the specimen on the stage. So this is transmitted polarized light. This is reflected polarized light. Combined, this is called an OR microscope. The difference between the OR microscope and a normal polarizing is simply this upper, this upper illumination. This particular microscope is a trinocular, so it has a trinocular video photography port. We can put different attachments on the top. This happens to be one, a 23 millimeter ID photo tube for connecting camera equipment. Looking at the eyepieces, they're wide field 10X eyepieces with a diopter adjustment on one. The diopter is, adjustment is used so that you get this eye in focus and then if this eye is not in focus, you adjust the diopter slightly so that both eyes are in focus. This is the intrapupillary distance. You adjust that so that the distance between your eyes matches these eye pieces. The head is on a convenient ergonomic 30 degree angle. That's easier to view than on a 45 degree angle. This microscope has a Bertrand lens. This is the Bertrand lens. The Bertrand assembly can be adjusted. We have knobs on both sides and on the front. You can use this to center it, center the Bertrand into the eye optical path. There's another one on the other side. This is the analyzer. The analyzer is a polarizing lens. It travels 90 degrees. When pushed in, the polarizing lens is in place. When pulled out, it takes the polarizing lens out of the eye path, out of the optical path. So if you don't want polarization, you pull it out. Push it back in to have polarization in the analyzer. To do cross polarization, you have a polarizing lens on the bottom transmitted light. This has markings from 0 to 90 to 180, 270, and back to 0 for a full 360 degree rotation. This is the polarizing lens, the polarizing part, and this is the analyzer. That's the polarizing on the transmitted light. On the reflected light, we also have polarization.
This is a polarizing filter on the reflected illumination. It goes 90 degrees. This is the field aperture adjustment. This is the other aperture adjustment. These adjust the light from the light housing. So this is the field, this is really the, this is the field diaphragm and this is the aperture diaphragm. These are adjustments for the bulb. Moves the bulb in different directions. When you pull out the, when you engage the Bertrand lens, looking into the eyepieces, you can see the bulb. That's when you use these knobs to center the bulb. This microscope also has a focusing lock stop lever. When engaged, it stops the lock, it stops the, I'll set it. Now that it's set, we can't go any higher. So I release it to allow the stage to go up higher. This is used so you can protect your slide and your objectives by setting the distance, the by setting the distance that the stage can travel. So if you cannot get an object in focus, you might have this set and you might need to release it to get it closer. It has the coarse focusing and the fine focusing. It also has coarse focusing tension. Turning it this direction will make this coarse focusing tension greater. Releasing it by turning it counterclockwise makes turning the course focusing easier. There's a variable intensity knob on the back and a main on off switch. This is a cord going to the reflected illumination bulb. This switch changes your light from the bottom transmitted to no light at all to the top reflected light. These are compensator plates, <coughs> quartz, mica, and gypsum compensator plates. That's where they're inserted. These are the condenser uh, alignment uh, condenser alignment knobs. We talked about these knobs being for the bulb, to center the bulb on the reflected illumination. These two condenser adjustment alignment knobs are used to are used to center the light from the base, the transmitted light. And you also pull in, you also engage the Bertrand so that you can see the bulb and you know how to center it. You 
can also adjust the, dia the diaphragm. This is an iris diaphragm. You want to close down your iris diaphragm when you're centering. You also have these, these diaphragms that you can turn down when you're centering for the reflected illumination. This has a rotating stage. This screw is to stop the rotation so it cannot rotate. You loosen it up and it rotates. It's 360 degrees, marked every one degree. This knob and the corresponding knob on the other side are for centering the stage. The stage is actually moving right now. You want to look into the eyepieces and rotate the stage and see that the specimen stays at the center. As needed, you have adjustments on the objectives. These can be used for centering the objectives. We have a 5 power, 10 power, 20 power, 40 power, and 60 power strain-free polarization lens. on a quintuple nose piece. Much better than the quad nose piece with only four place objectives. This has room for five objectives. This knob is used to remove the condenser. This knob in the front. See the iris diaphragm? And the polarizer. If you want to totally take the polarizer out of the field of view, you can unscrew this. At this point, we don't have any polarization in the transmitted light. This would be normal, normal bright field microscopy with no polarization. It has the same effect as, as pulling the, this knob out. When you pull this knob out, there is no polarization on the reflected illumination. Push it in, you have polarization. So on the transmitted, I've taken the polarizer off. This screw fits up with this opening. put the condenser back in place. The slide holder 
has x and y movements, x direction, <coughs> y direction. One thing to note is when you're looking at a specimen and you want to change the change the, uh, the magnification power, sometimes you have to lower the stage. May hit if this X Y stage X Y slide holder were not there, it would not be a problem. But and it depends too on the the orientation. I orient the slide holder to this angle. Well, actually, it made it. Really depends on how close you are. If you get really close, yeah, at this point, it's still very, the objective, is, the objective is very close to the slide. So I do have the objectives touching the holder, the XY slide holder.